Tak Fujimoto. Tak Fujimoto is a cinematographer from San Diego, California, who has worked in this role for over 60 films. Born in 1939, he's worked on several really big projects, including Star Wars Episode IV, A New Hope, That Thing You Do, and The Sixth Sense. Fujimoto originally graduated in London Film School, and he began working on bigger film projects in the early 1970s. He has worked with film director Jonathan Demme, and has worked with him consistently for over 10 film projects. Both Fujimoto and Demme worked on The Silence of the Lambs, which received a nomination and an award for Best Cinematography. This film even became the fifth highest grossing film of 1991. This movie is known for its infamous close-up shots, which some people refer to as the Jonathan Demme close-up. These shots basically consist of the character's face right up against the camera, staring directly into the lens, almost breaking the fourth wall. The angles range with the character's eyes viewed slightly off-centre in some shots, to others where the face is so close to the lens that the eyes are at the top of the frame and the lips are at the bottom of the frame, cutting out everything else. Demi mentions in an interview posted on YouTube that he and Fujimoto adopted the subjective camera technique used by Alfred Hitchcock to help you, the viewers, empathise with the characters as the shots uh, physically place you in the first-person perspective of them. Demi talks about the effectiveness of this technique and how he and Fujimoto uses extreme close-up shots intensely in The Silence of the Lambs to emphasise the psychological battle between the criminal and the detective. The cinematography works very well in showing this, including in a particular scene near the start of the film where Hannibal Lecter gets inside Clarice Starling's head during their first encounter. The camera work, in addition to the well-performed acting, gel together and you can really feel the discomfort of the protagonist while she is listening to Hannibal. I feel the tension in this scene, in addition to the mind games through each delivered line, leaves just as much of an impact on you to the point where it doesn't really need something like physical violence to keep it interesting. With this said, the film doesn't actually contain this type of violence until around 70 minutes in. The reason this all works is because we as viewers are able to relate to the character with the help of the cinematography, and this puts us in their position, which feels more intimidating than if we were just spectators of the character. Going in more depth with this scene, I wanted to find out how and when you would use subjective camera shots in a way that they would fit well with the rest of the scene. Demi mentions in another interview that if you cut to these shots too quickly, it would give the idea that the actor is looking at the camera and not the other character. You would need to ease into the opportunity of using this type of shot to make the transition seamless. This is done by using over-the-shoulder shots and getting tighter to allow you to enter and exit the subjective camera. One of Demi's quotes here includes, The more you back off and loosen the over-the-shoulders, you're just moving away from the goal of the intensity of the sequence, becoming more and more objective. Fujimoto has mastered the cinematography of this film very well, in that he has included other appropriate visual elements where needed in shots to support his intended result. In the scene where Clarice meets Hannibal, Fujimoto uses different height levels at which the camera is positioned facing the character. This is done to establish when one of the characters has more power over the other. One example that stands out is when Clarice sits down during her conversation. The camera is set up high and angled low, suggesting that she is being dominated by Hannibal. Fujimoto uses another technique to achieve this same effect, by having Hannibal's face take up the whole screen staring right at the lens to show he's confident and in control, whilst Clarice is shot looking slightly off-centre, taking up less than half of the screen. This establishes that she feels more vulnerable. These techniques, when used appropriately, can be very effective, and their presence adds to the scene. In comparison, the cinematography by Simon Duggan in The Great Gatsby from 2013 uses different techniques to achieve a similar sort of intense scene, where instead of the conversation being a discussion, it is an argument. Two characters, Tom Buchanan and Jay Gatsby, have a disagreement on who Daisy loves more out of them both. Different to the science of the lambs, Duggan in this scene uses colour to establish the atmosphere in the room by featuring a number of red elements, including the walls and cushions, to represent the heat in the situation. Whilst this works in that the characters are relating to their environment, there are other techniques which I feel aren't as effective including that the scene uses pace with faster cuts during the dialogue instead of extreme close-ups. With this said, almost every shot of the characters is done at the same exact eye level, 
and none of them at any point make eye contact with the camera. The problem here is that with this scene shot this way, all of the characters are appearing equal in terms of power. This doesn't make much sense, as Gatsby and Buchanan are clearly dominating the scene as they are the only ones in the room moving and talking whilst the others are sat down. Another issue here is that there isn't a point where you feel Gatsby or Buchanan winning the argument, as each of their shots are very similar back to back. This makes the scene less interesting as it doesn't really feel like it's escalating until right at the end where Gatsby loses his temper. Although there is one shot where Gatsby is stood with a fan positioned right in front of the camera, establishing that he is feeling more heated and angrier by Buchanan's statements. At the end of the scene, Gatsby completely flips out and this comes to the viewer as a total surprise as the tension during this argument gives no hints of this reaction even approaching. Cinematographer Duggan leads the viewer into a false sense of security to grab hold of their expectations and suddenly twist it. The ending is definitely what gives this scene its power and the build-up of the argument has a good intent but the pace still brings an issue. Since the scene is relatively fast-paced, it is hard to see and believe a character's emotion as there isn't enough time to watch their reactions. This differs from The Silence of the Lambs, in which the emotions conveyed by the characters seem more believable as the shots are longer and the viewers have more time to connect. Fujimoto has worked on several films that use different lighting setups, including low-key and high-key lighting, to support the mood of the scene and build the atmosphere. For instance, low-key lighting is used in the film The Sixth Sense, which in some scenes is set at a tone which captures more detail and emotion in the eyes due to the combination of the light and shadows. This effect highlights the eyes nicely and Fujimoto likes to do this any time he can as the eyes are crucial in conveying emotion and so they help narrate the story. As a cinematographer you've got to understand the story really well in addition to the director's intentions and so depending what you decide to use or not use in a shot will determine how it's read. The book Cinematography, Theory and Practice by Blaine Brown includes a quote on page two which says, when we create a film project, one of our primary tasks is to create a visual world for the characters to inhabit. The visual world is an important part of how the audience will perceive the story, how they will understand the characters and their motivations. When Fujimoto worked as the cinematographer on Ferris Bueller's Day Off, he uses visual techniques to connect the characters with the world around them like how Duggan has achieved in The Great Gatsby with the red colour effect. In one particular scene, the three main characters visit a museum which consists of some of the most famous artworks from around the world including sculptures and paintings. In this scene, Fujimoto worked with director John Hughes to relate each of the artworks with the characters. He used a wide shot to capture the full image of the paintings and the characters from head to foot. This shows that the characters each have a relationship with the paintings potentially seeing themselves within them. Another shot features Ferris and his girlfriend Sloane having a romantic moment in front of a blue starry piece. The sun appears to be casting down on the couple's relationship and the blue is a colour that symbolises consistency which is subtly commenting on Ferris and Sloane's continued relationship. One particular scene in the gallery features the character Cameron looking at a painting of a mother stood with her child and looks closer and closer at the child. The context of this is to show that the more Cameron looks at the little girl, the less he sees of her physically due to the texture of the artwork becoming more visible. Eventually, he sees nothing, and this shows that he fears the more people look at him, the less people realise he's actually there, and so he feels like he's nothing to everyone. Cinematically, this is cleverly done in that it relates to the plot as Cameron doesn't get on with his dad, and the mother and daughter in the artwork are shown to represent this. Fujimoto achieves this scene well with close-up shots alternating between Cameron and the painting, going from a wide shot to just an extreme close-up of Cameron's eyes. I personally like the way Fujimoto shot one of the later scenes of this film, where Cameron accidentally wrecks his dad's Ferrari with it reversing right into a ditch off his high-level garage. The moment the car crashes, everything stops with a close-up of Cameron's emotional reaction to the situation, and then a wide of him stood in the clear wide open area of the garage. This composition works well in executing how Cameron is feeling in that he feels empty from the loss of the car and scared of the consequences from his dad. The fact that Ferris and Sloane aren't in this shot suggests that he feels he's the only one impacted by the situation. The absence of music and movements adds to this effect. All these elements combined make the scene work well, and if there was any movements in the shots of him stood still, the image wouldn't work. 
Similarly to the silence of the lambs, Fujimoto uses the subjective camera technique to capture Cameron in first person walking up to the window where the car flew out. The slow, subtle movements of the camera establish the fear and nervousness Cameron has at seeing the damage and the concerned looks of Sloane and Ferris add to this emotion. In The Silence of the Lambs, this effect is equally as powerful when Clarice slowly walks up to Hannibal with her ID. The camera makes slow movements representing that she's fearful like Cameron, but in this case more disturbed by what Hannibal is doing. To summarise, the subjective camera is very effective in conveying character emotion, and this is effective in not only these two films, but throughout his other works as well.